right. Um, in a previous video, we had um, looked at the scapula and the clavicle. And so today, actually, we're going to look at the bones of the, uh, basically, the arm. And these are going to be the humerus, the ulna, the radius, the carpal bones, metacarpals, and then the phalanges. And then um, another video will show you the basically the lower extremities. Um, but we'll start off with the humerus. And if you look at the humerus, um, a, f a few things that you notice. Uh, once again, make sure that you understand your directional terms because there are going to be certain features at the superior side and the inferior side, as well as the anterior and posterior side that we'll be looking at. Um, the humerus, at one end, it has this kind of roundish end called uh, the head of the humerus. And it's basically attached to a very, um, to a neck. So anytime you have a head, you have a neck. Um, and you'll see this, uh, particularly if you want to orient it properly, you'll notice that the uh, head of the humerus is always going to be facing medially, which tends to make sense because the glenoid cavity of the scapula is going to be facing laterally. And so the head of the humerus in particular is part of the um, ball and socket joint called the shoulder joint. Um, also at the superior side, uh, just past the uh, ball, the head of the humerus, is the greater and the lesser tubercles, and these are basically attachment points for muscles. Um, on the shaft region or the diaphysis, you have this roughened area called the deltoid tuberosity, and you can kind of feel it if you pick up a bone, and this is actually an attachment point for a muscle called the deltoid. Um, at the inferior side, if you look at just the anterior inferior side, you'll notice several processes. On the lateral side, you have the capitulum and a small process here called the lateral epicondyle. Uh, these are both uh, uh, attachment points for muscles. Uh, on the medial side, you have the trochlea. You notice it kind of looks like a pulley. Um, if you've seen a pulley, it kind of has this little spool-like structure and some um, basically some uh, thread that you can kind of use to lift very heavy things. Um, and on, also on the medial side, you have this medial epicondyle. And this one is actually very prominent. If you really kind of feel um, on either side of your elbow, you'll notice there's two prominences. And the bigger one is this medial epicondyle. Now, the trochlea of the humerus is going to fit in with um, another feature on another bone called the ulna. And the feature that it fits into is the trochlear notch. And you'll notice that basically uh, the trochlear notch of the ulna is rotating around the trochlea of the humerus. And so this is actually uh, one of the articulation points of that elbow joint. Now, on the posterior inferior side of the humerus, you'll notice this deep depression here. This is called the olecranon fossa. And the olecranon fossa is going to be where a feature, once again, on the ulna called the olecranon fits into. And this olecranon uh, on the ulna is actually the point of your elbow, which obviously you can easily feel. And so, you know, these two features, the trochlea and then the olecranon fossa, are part of that elbow joint. Now, looking at the lower part of the arm, we essentially have two bones. Um, we have the ulna, and then we have on the medial side, and then we have the uh, radius on basically the lateral side. And this is um, medial and lateral when essentially you hold your um, arms in anatomical position. So you can, so if you were to, uh, the radius would always be here along your thumb side, whereas the ulna would be here um, along basically your pinky side. Uh, looking at the ulna for a second, uh, some features that you see of this that have already been previously pointed out is the 
olecranon. Once again, that's the point of your elbow. The trochlear notch, which always reminds me, I think, of some of those nature programs where the, the, the snake is being milked for poison. It kind of always reminds me of that. But, um, but the trochlear notch, which is rotating around the trochlea. Um, so the ulna does articulate with the humerus. It also, you'll notice, articulates with the radius. And it's a little hard to see, but you can see that there's a point um, right here on the proximal end where the ulna and the radius would actually rotate around each other, which would allow us to basically rotate our uh, forearm here. Looking at the radius, uh, two points to note is that it has a very flat head. This will easily help you to distinguish it from the ulna. Um, the other uh, feature point is the radial tuberosity, which you can kind of see right there. It's just this uh, process below the radial head. And um, this is an attachment point for an important muscle in your uh, arm called the biceps brachii. Uh, kind of continuing down the arm, we've got the um, carpal bones. And you'll notice that there are eight carpal bones. Now, three of these, one, two, three, um, are going to articulate basically with the radius and the ulna. Um, and then the others are going to articulate with the bones of your hands, which are called the metacarpals. Now, they each do have individual names, but for the purposes of this video and for the class, you just need to know them as a group rather than the individual names. So just recognize these as carpal bones. You'll notice that they're sort of cube shaped. They are considered short bones um, because they don't have these well-defined ends and shaft regions. Looking in the hand, You'll notice that uh, the metacarpals, and there are actually five metacarpals uh, per hand uh, corresponding to basically um, your five fingers. Uh, because each metacarpal, you'll notice, is attached to a bone associated with your finger. We start uh, counting the metacarpals based on which one is associated with the thumb. Well, how do you know which one's associated with the thumb? Well, that's where you have to look at the bones in the digits themselves. Uh, these in the digits are called phalanges. And notice that each finger has three uh, phalanges, but the thumb has two. So if you can recognize the um, digit that has two phalanges, then you know where to start counting. And then it becomes easy. It's just metacarpal one, metacarpal two, metacarpal three, metacarpal four, metacarpal five. Uh, traditionally, these have been written as Roman numerals. Then if you look at the bones of the digits, you've got your phalanges. Uh, the singular version of this is a phalanx. Um, with the thumb, you have a proximal uh, phalanges and then a distal ph phalanx. Now with the uh, fingers, then you have just proximal, middle, and distal phalanges associated with each of the fingers. And so that actually completes the discussion of the bones of the arm.